But yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of what else has been going on, we just got back from Kazakhstan. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, Craig, you're gonna come on here and you're gonna make some cheap fucking Borat jokes about Kazakhstan. They're gonna be bad. They're gonna be a low level punching down level of comedy. And I'm gonna say to you, I'm not that type of person because quite frankly, I'm a coward. And if I made any Borat jokes, those people might physically harm me. But Borat is a funny movie. And the reason it's funny is because if you go to Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. First of all, it has mountains. I'm from Australia. Australia is very flat. Australia is as flat as a single gal. There's nothing big here at all. Mount Kosciuszko is 2,000 something meters. The lodge we were at over there was 3,500 meters higher. That was not good for my health. I couldn't even, yeah, like I said earlier, walk around without running out of breath. I was starting to get quite concerned about that Mexico City match when I was at that level of altitude. But really what I think gets lost in translation sometimes is the victims of Borat, the true victims are the Americans that just believed that Sasha Baron Cohen could say he was from Kazakhstan, put on an accent not relevant to Kazakhstan, have mannerisms and things like that that have nothing to do with Kazakhstan. And because a lot of Americans don't see the world outside their country, they just believed fucking all of it. And it's funny, as a foreigner that lives in America, I've had Americans come up to me and say, Australia, what fucking language do you speak down there? And we could really say absolutely anything. So I think as a non-American watching Borat, you really appreciate the level of joke that he's playing on the people he speaks to in the movie. The crazy thing is, is even the start of the movie is filmed in fucking Romania. It's not even in Kazakhstan. They're not even Kazakh people in it. So although it's obviously was a sore spot in the country and pissed off a lot of Kazakhs, the true joke lies in the people, in the, the Americans. Obviously it could work in a lot of countries. It just works really well in America because yeah, America is like the, the center of the world for a lot of cultural things. And a lot of Americans only focus on American culture. So yeah. They do fall victim to those jokes very, very well. So I would say, uh, as much as I love Kazakhstan, that movie's fucking funny, I just wish a lot of people would realize who the joke was on. You know what I mean? But yeah, Kazakhstan, beautiful place. We're at this, my friend Alan's Mountain Lodge. I've been going to Kazakhstan since 2016. I went there in 2016 for ADCC trials. Made great friends with a lot of people over there. Alan. Tooligan, um, a lot of the local guys, Yerzan, I can't even fucking pronounce his name right because I'm a stra retarded Australian accent. Yeah, I love Kazakhstan. Been going there a long time. Beautiful, beautiful place. Great people. Uh, in terms of their culture, right, obviously they're nomadic tribesmen. That's their origins and stuff. So in that sense, I believe traditionally they didn't see a lot of people. They would live in isolation. So one thing they do really good is host a person so if you're formally invited and they host you god damn it they treat you like a fucking king over there and i think again that dates back to the traditional culture where because they wouldn't see many people the people they would see they would welcome him in they would take care of him they would feed him give him everything so yeah in terms of uh, me that's still one of my favorite places i've ever been some of my favorite people i've ever dealt with are all from Kazakhstan, so it's definitely a top tier place for you guys to go. I would highly recommend a trip to Kazakhstan. I don't want to say too much because we're actually gonna we've got a bit of a project going on over there, but I won't spill the beans on that. So yeah, some more interesting stuff about Kazakhstan, right? Is uh, I was over there and it was fucking minus twenty degrees, fucking freezing. We went there on a whim from Bali. We had some business there again. I can't really explain too much of this shit right now, but you guys will see in the future. Hopefully in the near future, this shit could take a while. But yeah, we were in Bali. I didn't even expect to go to Kazakhstan, so we had no winter clothes at all. So I just had my fucking Bogan Bali kit. So we had to land in Kazakhstan, immediately head to the mall and find the most ridiculous snow-covered outfits we could find. But yeah, in terms of uh, the place, yeah, we got taken care of very, very well. We trained a Kazakhstan top team. I've trained there many, many times over the years. 
Super tough grapplers. One of my old friends from New York, Alibi's there. Dude's a beast. It was very tough rounds each and every day. Even our Mati as a city, the city we were in, uh, seemed like high altitude, or maybe it was a jet lag, but it was fucking hard training. I had about three rounds of me every day before I quit. Our Mati as a city, sick, sick food. We ate horse every day. The guys told me horses cure everything, fucking injuries, male pattern baldness. As soon as they said that, I was like, brother, we are eating Bishbamark, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Forget the trip to Turkey, get some horse into you. So we pounded that down. Um, the architecture around there is wild. It's like uh, all this Soviet architecture that's sick. I believe the other city, Astana up north, is more of like a Dubai like looking city that looks nothing like their Soviet roots. But yeah, I love all the old, old Soviet architecture. It looks, looks fucking wild. One weird thing about these snow places, maybe someone can explain this to me, is that um, the buildings, the heat is set so fucking high. So it's like, I go outside, I got a hoodie and a jacket on, and I'm okay. I walk into a restaurant, walk into my hotel room, and it's 45 degrees fucking Celsius in there. I'm cooking alive. And I'm like, that fucking change in temperature I just don't get it. Eh? Same shit would happen to me in New York. Like I lost so much time of the day just dressing and undressing. It's like, hey, just set the heat down a little. Like uh, the hotel we're at, we had to open the fucking window. So if it's minus 20 outside and we have to open the windows to be able to sleep at night, how about you fucking crank it down a bit? That just lets me know that a woman is in charge of the heating system there because it's hotter than hell. It is fucking hotter than hell in some of those buildings. And something that made sense to me, so when I first walked into the room, I look at my bar fridge, and in my bar fridge, there's obviously the regular things you'd expect, like soft drink, water, but the condoms, there were condoms in the room, and they were in the bar fridge. And in some sort of sick joke, the bar fridge was locked, you had to call the staff to open it. But at first I thought, why the fuck are the condoms in the fridge? And then I realized, wow, the room is like a sauna. If you're getting lucky that night, you might be actually enticed to use a condom to cool yourself down. Not cool your, just cool yourself down, but cool down that lucky Kazakh lady that you're indulging there. Those are some of the interesting things, eh? Like fucking condoms in the fridge. In all the places in the world I've been, I've never seen condoms in the fridge, nor thought it would ever have a purpose unless you were running that heating system so fucking high. But I don't know, maybe I feel the hot more because I'm on so many drugs. I'm on so many fucking uh, stimulants every day. Oral steroids, my T levels are high. God bless Ever Titan. Um, maybe that's why I feel the heat more. But fuck me, I can't handle it. I can't sleep in the heat. I want it to be nice and cold.